Hey everybody, welcome to Wagered on Tilt. I am T, and today we are going to be wrapping up our NHL predictor. As a reminder, this predictor can be used for many, many sports. You don't have to use all the methods that I'm using in this predictor, but what I'm doing is I'm taking different versions of data modeling and trying to combine it into a tool that lets me see the spread for the puck line as well as the money line and find my edge in NHL games. We have already covered collecting our stats, cleaning the stats, setting up the sheet with the needed calculations, and today we're gonna to be covering how to find your edge with the results that your tool is able to predict. We are not covering today the Monte Carlo nor the player build lineup um, or the linear regression models. Those will be in later videos. I still am working through those and trying to think how I want to build those. And with that, let's go ahead and find our edge within our NHL predictor tool. We have our sheet here, which we've been building in previous videos and slowly work on our way towards it. Um, so here we have our spread. So right now I'm just going to be saying we're going to be watching the Ottawa Senators against the Toronto Maple Leafs. In net, there's going to be Matt Murray and Jack Campbell, and it's pulling in their statistics. So let's go ahead and set our spread. So we're going to say that the Ottawa Senators are getting one and a half, and that's Toronto is going to be negative one and a half. So now that we're passing that information in, right here you can see that the predicted cover is 56.47, and this is your scores, um, and this is based upon if you add in the power play goals. So what we're gonna be covering today is how do we find our money line edge and our spread edge. So here, this is a little out of order, so you can feel free to change it on your sheet if you want. Um, I did set it up this way intentionally because this is just how I am most used to putting this information in. So first, let's go ahead and enter the money line information. So for here, I believe this one was around 140, and this one was around 300 this morning. So we have our money line, and we have the 140 for Ottawa to win and minus 300 for Toronto Maple Leafs to win. Now what we want to find out is how much of an edge do we really get from doing this. In order to do that, we need to set up an if formula. The reason we need an if formula is that if the money line odds are positive, it is calculated one way. If it is negative, it is calculated a different way. So let's go ahead and start by typing equals if, and then we'll point to that cell M3 is less than zero comma, now we need to set up this formula here. We want the absolute value, ABS, of M3, which is the money line, plus 100, then we're gonna close that parenthesis. Then we're gonna say times F3, which is gonna be their predicted win probability, right? So again, this is money line, not the spread. Then what we need to do so let's go ahead and subtract some info. So let's go ahead and put in some parentheses right there, minus the absolute value of M3 divided by the absolute value of M3. All right, and put this bracket in there, great. So what we have here is the absolute value. So again, we're using absolute so that we have a properly calculated value here. So it's gonna be 140 plus 100 times this percentage minus the 140. That is if it is a negative value. The other one is going to be if it is a positive value, which is slightly different. We still have the absolute value the ABS of M3 plus 100 times F3 minus 100 divided by 100. Okay, so when we hit enter, we have a negative money line edge, which is bad. And then we'll just go ahead and autofill this into the one below which is good. All right, so then I'm gonna go ahead and change this into a percentage. So maybe it's a little bit easier to read. There we go. So this is saying, even if you bet the Toronto Maple Leafs at minus 300, 
you still have a 6.96% edge in your wager. From that, that is because they have an 80% chance to cover. That is why the books are going ahead and giving them such a negative odds value for you. However, there is still some edge in there because it's such a likelihood that they're going to win. As a reminder, as bettors, you don't always bet the guaranteed winner. You look for teams that have an edge. There's often going to be times when it's close to a 50-50, or maybe one team is a 45% chance of winning, but the edge is, you know, 20%. So now let's go ahead and look at the odds for the spread. So let's say at the plus one and a half, they are getting minus 250, and the Toronto Maple Leafs are getting a 200 at a minus one and a half. Now, what we're going to want to do is go ahead and calculate our edge again. And to calculate the edge, it's a very similar thing to what we were doing before. But here, we're just going to go ahead and paste this one in so it's a little bit quicker. You're now looking at O, which is your odds for your spread. Same type of formula, but now we're pointing to the predicted cover percentages. So here, and then the same thing. So it's the same formula from our money line edge. We're just now using it in the values that are for the spread. So if we copy and paste this one down, all right, so let's go ahead and turn these into percentages. All right, so now that we're looking at this, if we're trusting our odds, what we're saying is that if I were to bet the Toronto Maple Leafs at minus 300, I get a 6%, almost 7% edge because I think there's an 80% chance they'll win straight up. If I play the puck line at minus one and a half, so the team must win by two, I actually have a 30% edge. And the reason being is that that is less likely to happen. And here we see that the predicted cover is only going to be about 43%. Since we have a 43% chance, it's less than 50-50, the book is going to give us better odds on that. However, we're also getting far better on our edge. So from this, the decision would likely be made that I would wager between a half a unit up to three units on this edge. That way I have in a long run, a series of gains. These are some of the things that you can look for with these tools. As you build these out, you can go ahead and start using these to try and forecast and predict what edge you're gonna get and make the smart decision on which games to bet. Betting all games is kind of ill-advised, just as is taking the deep odds or the long dog every single time. You want to be able to mix and match and find who's the underdog, but I think they have good returns. Who's the uh, dominant choice, and they still have good returns. Would I rather play the spread? Would I rather play the, the, the money line? You can also go with the predicted total. Now, right now, um, while we're recording this, uh, a lot of COVID stuff is happening and games are being canceled or postponed. Goalies are overly rested and without that continual practice of taking those hard shots from players, uh, the goals are going off the wall right now. So the over is coming in more often than not. In here, this is a pre-COVID statistic that I'm using in the sheet. So we would predict that the total would be around four goals in this game. So if I saw a over under at, you know, say six at minus 120 on the over and even on the under, I may want to take that. In order to figure that out, we would need to figure out what is our percentage chance that the, this is going to be the score. We can go into that in another video, but this is just, again, very commonly used edge finding to figure out where do I want to place my bet. So thanks for sticking with me. That is the closure of finding our edge. My odds, this is just a converter that we'll be using in the future. Um, it will not be covered in this current series. We'll come back to this once I start finishing up things around the prediction regression in Monte Carlos. That's it, everybody. That is the final video on the NHL predictor. Um, we've already gone through part one, where we set the sheet up, part two, where we collect the stats, three, where we set up the formulas to find our information that we're going to use to decide on an edge. And in today's video, where we're actually seeing, do we have an edge on our bet or not? Hopefully this information has been helpful. 
Um, if you have any ideas or thoughts on these, please shout them out. Let me know. I love to share information and try and learn from others as well. If you have any questions uh, or need any help or just want to talk about betting, feel free to drop a comment in the comment section and I'll respond to you uh, as fast as I can. If you like the content that I am churning out, please go ahead and subscribe. That way you're notified as soon as a new video is posted. I do look forward to posting some pick information. I look forward to building a couple more videos around different prop tools and betting tools and dashboards. You can follow me on Instagram. You can also follow me on Twitter. Twitter and Instagram is where I'm going to be posting most of my picks and then doing maybe a monthly or a quarterly review session here on YouTube with how did those picks do over the last quarter um, and trying to pick out some of the ones where either I did really well or where I did really bad and then that way I can analyze why did it work so well and then try and see if we can figure out if my models need tweaking or any adjustments. Until next time, happy wagering!